I am Bilal Morris, and this is Belizean Legends. As Belizeans, we have a great history of achievement. We are fortunate to witness some magnificent athletic performances. We've been privileged to enjoy great musical concerts from extraordinary musical artists. As a nation, we have struggled politically, but also made great progress. Culturally, we continue to evolve as a society. Where were you when some of these incredible moments occurred? Belizean legends will transcend you back into time to relive some of these spectacular events and offer some behind-the-scenes perspective on the untold stories as well as updating you on the individual lives featured in this series. Ambassador Bert Tucker, undoubtedly he was and still is a man worthy for us to follow his lead. For me, just listening to a very small portion of what he wrote satisfy me that he was indeed a very wise man. These are the writings that convinced me, and I quote, The God of love created everything. Everything was in his plan. Everything has a purpose. Everything is cared for, and everything is precious. End of quote. The, that right there, in my view, is very profound and worthy to be called wisdom. Those words alone, though, are not enough to the Belmopan City Council for a street to be named after. But saying those words, along with action, we do recognize Ambassador Bert Tucker, all his works, and the milestones he has um, gone undergone worthy enough for a street to be named in our precious capital city after him. Today, on behalf of the Belmont City Council, the mayor, the other city councillors, and the entire staff, and the city at large, we are truthfully proud to, to name this street Ambassador Adalbert A. Tucker Street. Please join me as we give him a moment of silence which he's very worthy of. Thank you. When I aspired to become a city councillor a few years ago as a community activist, I envisioned continuing work that I have been doing and many other things to be a part of something that if I get elected, I would be involved in. Truthfully, naming the streets was not one of them. I didn't really see it as something um, that I should really occupy my time in doing. However, I invest a lot of time talking to older people than myself. And Mr. Cuthbert Burrell is one of them. He too is a very wise man. It was not after, like, after I sit and discuss with Mr. Burrell and I discussed with him many things, but one of them being naming the streets of our city, and he convinced me of how important that process is and how the names of the street tells a lot about the city that we live in. And I believe that too makes it even more worthy to name the street after Ambassador Tucker. Thank you very much. I hope we had a good rest of the morning. Thank you very much, Mrs. Guy. And as you rightfully said, uh, I believe the entire country should name streets from their patriots. Uh, and that's not happening. And we need to emphasize that on our government, that our patriots should have that preference. Next, we have our guest speaker, Ms. Lisa Tucker.
to stand here to talk about the man, Bert Tucker, my brother. There is a special feeling when persons are talking about my brother. This man has been a global citizen, a man of the world, but a simple man who had humility and who at the very core was a humanitarian. I refer to him as a voice for humanity. And so as I speak, we all know all the great things Bert did. And so the emphasis is not on identifying what was done, but in just sharing a little bit about who this man is. He's a patriot, yeah, we know that. But what, what got him there? And so in my conversations with him, I would always ask, what drives you? You're driven. What drives you? And he sent me a mail one day that says, until I'm laid to rest, I will continue to work on the reformulation at the individual, the family, the community, the national and global levels. And these reformulations are required for African redemption, rehumanization and the enhancement of our humanity. That's at the core and soul of the work he did. As a historian, we know Mr. Tucker, Bert Tucker, Bert, Jeff, my pet name for him, or family pet name for him. And in the family, when we talked about him, we spoke about him as being a humanitarian, a revolutionary, a diplomat, a father, a friend. But again, I, I kept saying to him, who were those painters? And he goes back to Mandela. And he said to me, there's something you need to know. Mandela said, in Africa, there's a concept known as Ubuntu. And that concept says the profound sense that we are human only through the humanity of others. That if we are able to accomplish anything in the world, it will in equal measure be due to the work and achievement of others. That is where my brother took that spirit of his patriotic lifestyle and being from. Okay. He speaks a lot about Samuel Hayes, and I know all of us who knows Bert Tucker. There's some names that get repeated and repeated and repeated. And one day I spoke to him about patriotism, and he says to me, don't get confused by what this thing really means. Go back to what Samuel Haynes says it means. And Haynes says, the world needs a higher degree of patriotism based upon rather than human, rather than national and empirical needs. The highest and most durable patriotism is to God and humanity to the peace and security of all peoples. Those things were at the core of who my brother really was, at his very soul. And so coming out of that, the work he has done and continued to do, and continues to do, even after his passing, was rooted really in what he was at the core. Okay. His common phrase, his phrase, his tagline, none but ourselves. And again I said, what is that about? And he says, you need to know your history. Go back to Garvey and let's look at the concept of self-reliance. It is none but ourselves who are going to do what we need to do. Samuel, H Samuel Haynes talks about there's not going to be a Moses coming. We are the Moses. We are the saviors. We are the ones who are going to do what we are here to do. Okay? And it was that understanding of our responsibility and our accountability for our 
contribution to nation building, to the restoration of humanity. That is what he tried to teach. And he taught it by the way he lived. He did not believe that teaching really should happen in a classroom. He says, you must walk in the talk. Okay? As I spoke to him, because we had many conversations, and so my, my knowing the man at the deeper level came from the curiosity as to what makes you not get tired when nothing seems to be happening. And he made, he commented one day and he said to me, there is something that you need to get. You need to be very clear. Education is not simply instruction. Education goes way below. It's affecting the mind. It's the talk. Okay? So you may believe you are not achieving. You may believe that you are not imparting. But it takes time. It takes time to change a culture. It takes time to wake us up. Okay? If I look and I go back to the Ubuntu concept, my brother gives credit to the Belizean benefactors, as he called them. Honorable Philip Molson, Mr. Fairweather, okay. He spoke about those persons going before him, and those were the shoulders that he stood on, and therefore that gave him the opportunity to do the work he did. Nation building, as a patriot, He's been doing that from the days of Philip Gosa up to working with our current Prime Minister, the Honorable Dean Barrow. And so when you look at the span of this man's life, he was being a patriot, a benefactor, and a humanitarian all his life. He didn't know how not to be. The in terms of his whole concept of none but ourselves, the important thing that I want us to take from this as we continue his work, the matter of self-reliance. His view was that until we can comfortably implement policies and procedures and technologies that will enable and facilitate self-development, okay, sustainable development then we would not have achieved what we set out to do. So it was not about getting something done today but it was em embracing what we were imparting in a way that people also took on walking the talk. The transfer of knowledge for him was something that he spoke to a lot and the aim there again was sharing knowledge such that persons, you didn't give them a fish, you taught them how to fish. And so when we look at his accomplishments and we look at the Bell Reef Oasis concept where you are talking about teaching communities to be involved in sustainable development, when we look at the reforestation project our concept, our, our approach that he used in working with Mr. Ferret and replanting of trees, you get the understanding that where Mr. Tucker was, it was that at the end of his time, like he said, until he was laid to rest, he was going to do whatever he needed to do to leave this place better than he found. He was a prolific writer, a poet, storyteller, a comedian. He was a voice for humanity and he was not afraid to speak. He accepted that for him it was more risky for him to keep quiet than for him to speak out. We see the patrimony association that he stepped into. We saw the citizen call, the citizen organization that he stepped into. We heard you speaking about his passion for young people to get it, 
that they were not being sent to university to come out to get a job, but instead to come out and to create a job. The vision was none but ourselves. And so, in closing, I go back to looking at the last thing he was doing on the Reparation Commission. Again, the matter of justice, the matter of equity, the matter of fairness, the matter of countries being robbed in his mind, being, being our birthright being taken away, say slavery, our, our countries being robbed of valuable resources and its people living at the level of meager basic resources. His passion and his fight for right and righteousness was at also at the core of him being willing to jump on board with the Reparation Commission. I know he did many, many conversations around the country, educating, but not necessarily instructing, but educating in a way to change people's mind about their rights. We are entitled to what we have, but none but ourselves will allow us to get it. We can't sit and wait for somebody to give it to us. And so I close by commenting on that same point, but I take it a li little bit further. He says, where the Zambezi meets the Belize River, there you will find me, down in Isabella, contemplating eternity. And there is a place where all our rivers meet, and it is in the oceans of our common consciousness. That, for me, is what this is about. Our common consciousness that we are now required to stand on Ambassador Tucker's shoulder, like he stood on Garvey's shoulder, like he stood on Honorable Goldson's shoulder, on Mr. Fairwood's shoulder. He, we are to get on his shoulder now and continue the work in that common consciousness that none but ourselves will allow us to achieve what we are setting out, that sustainable development, that life, that sanctuary, that space where we as human beings can be our best selves. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is Lisa Atters. Next on the <coughs> program, we have us remarks from Honorable Excellency Senor Joel Perez Marcano, Ambassador of the Embassy of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. Senor Marcano. Mr. Carter Clark, representative of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Ms. Aina Goy, Deputy Mayor, Belmont and City Council. Ms. Elizabeth Tucker, Arthur, brother and honorary consul of Belize in Jamaica, brother of um, Ambassador Adalbert, um, Adalbert Alexander Tucker. Ross, I speak to uh, Belize Commission, brother, friends. On behalf of the people and government of the Bolivian Republic of Venezuela, 
I want to express my appreciation to the Honorable Mayor of Puerto Pan City, Simeon Lopez, and his consigliere to granting to his Excellency Ambassador Adalbert Alexander Tucker the high honor of his name to one on the street on the, uh, of this capital city of Belize. The, sign the designation is a fair and deserved tribute of the state of Belize and the Belizean people to a human being, honest and hard working, he served his country until the end on the life and the vote his life to war and fight for the best cause for the people of Belize, the Caribbean people and people of African Mother Earth. In particular, as Venezuelan, Bolivian and forward of the struggle of Commandant Hugo Chavez Frias, I express my sincere appreciation for the solidarity of companion and friend Ambassador Adalbert Alexander Tucker with the Bolivian Revolution and his strong defense in Belize and all countries where he had the opportunity to tell about the great democratic achievement and social progress achieved by the Venezuelan people and their solidarity with the people of Belize and other people of Latin America and Caribbean. Also, Distribute to Belmopan City a reckoning of the long and clean record as, as a foreign service officer, as worker to the service to the poor community in Belize, poet and music author for one to Caribbean culture from his fellow Jamaica to Guyana, where the creation of single people called to unite to achieve their dream and freedom and progress. Finally, as friend and follower of Tucker, we remain committed to prices and spread his goal and his example of social activism so that the generation to come know that in the land and mahogany, rubber, tafir, and beyond the river live Dream and food, I mean, who devote his life to the welfare and happiness of these people and humanity. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador Bantan. Next on the, on the program, we have our remarks by Mr. Cesar Ross. but before I call Mr. Cesar to the podium, I would just like to say that um, I would recommend that Ambassador Tucker also go down in the book of history as uh, in the history where they have the, um, the national heroes and benefactors because he has contributed a lot to the country of Belize. In my mind, I met him a few years ago before I came to work at the embassy. And I knew that Mr. Tucker was a great man because he spoke very soft. He's not a person that speaks loud when I met him. He's a soft-spoken guy. And I and I know that he had some dreams. So I know that he had some accomplishments to do because I met him at the Gangriga Town Council where I was working. And I used to speak with him because he came at the council to do some rearrangements of the council's program. So I analyze him as a person who had faith in his ideas. He had hope in accomplishing them. And I know that he was doing it for the love of our citizens. Now, I now welcome Mr. Cesar Ras to the podium, the vice chairman of the Belize Commission Initiative for Justice and Reparation. Mr. Cesar. Good morning everyone, good morning good ladies morning. and gentlemen. I don't know if Donald Fredo makes that proposal more that I'm coming here to speak as a social historian and anthropologist. I have 
constantly working at rewriting and proposing a rewrite of the list of our urban factors and heroes. Uh, sorry. I just had a conversation with my students at the university, putting on one hand what Isaiah Mortar contributed and on the other hand what Baron Bliss contributed and asking why is it that Baron Bliss has a day and a place of honor and Isaiah Mortar is hardly ever mentioned. And of course we can come up with our own reasons as to why that happened under a colonial government as such. Ambassador Marcano, Carlos, Deputy Mayor Sky, Tucker Artis. It's also an honor of mine to be here. I have always been a student of Malaysian and social movements and, and social history as such, and especially of the marginal and indigenous people of this country. And so when approached, when first called by Ambassador Tucker, and I have met him on a number of different occasions, on a number of different projects, but when called a couple days ago to be part of a new cause, a cause that he had held, that I have held, that we in passing have mentioned to one another, but that finally had gotten some official recognition by the CARICOM Cardinal of State. And I was quick to respond to his call as such. I want to say, and, and going back to the words on paper here, um, we are here today to remember and pay tribute to a man who was and continues to be a friend and mentor to many of us. A man who wine and dined with kings, presidents and heads of state. But a man but a man who also talked and walked with each and every one of us, not of royal or official stature as such. A man whose life was dedicated to our cause, a life of bringing back balance to our communities, our nation, our world. Balance that would, in as practical and moral as possible, right the wrongs that were visited on us by a colonial history and legacy of exploitation. A cause that many of us standing here, sit, seated here today, have seen, have heard, and in our own ways have now embraced. Ambassador Adalbert Alexander Tucker, known to one and all fondly as simply for Tucker, was and continues to be a big man made big footprints on our land, here in Belize, in the Caribbean, in Africa, and especially in the Belize River Valley, where he was in every little detail focused on seeing the children of the valley grow strong, firm, proud, and stand as tall as the mahogany trees that he invited them all to plant and grow and grow with. We are here today, his family, his friends, individuals he touched and inspired. We are here to pay tribute to our brother. But most important, we are here to commit ourselves to the gate our lives, to his cause, to our cause, to the cause of all people around Belize, the Caribbean, Africa, and the world who are standing up and standing out in their own desire to contribute in our own little way to bringing balance to this world, to helping make this world more just, more right, more a world where the least of our brothers will share in the most of the fruits of the world. Bert, we honor you, brother mentor, friend, but most importantly, we commit ourselves to carrying out your work, our work, the work of all. Thank you for your life, your love, your lessons. They are now our life. To live, to love, and to learn.
you very much, Mr. Assessor Ross, for those inspiring words. Now, uh, since we are closing now, I just need to say that um, Ambassador Adalbert Alexander Tucker, to me, was the precursor for the Belize Commission Initiative for Justice and Reparation. He reminds me, like, the great patriot of Venezuela, who was the precursor for the Venezuelan independence, who was then continued by Simon Bolivar. So uh, it was the great a great patriot. So uh, Ambassador Tucker is the precursor. He's a precursor and then we will need to continue his legacy. I'm a member of also of the Belize Commission Initiative for Justice and Reparation along with my brother there and some others. And, uh, our brother here from the Foreign Affairs. So we will continue the struggle and so we guarantee that we will not stop. We will continue his uh, legacy. So thanks very much for coming. This ends the program for the unveiling of the street naming. And from now we proceed on to the Venezuelan Institute where we will continue with the pre presentation up to 2 p.m. this afternoon. Thanks very much.